you for this day. It's a day you've made. It's a day to rejoice and a day to be glad. We're glad, as David said, when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Father, we know this house belongs to you. Yes. We know you have something special planned for this house today, Lord. And I know you're going to release something mighty and powerful in this place. So, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome your presence today. We give you glory for what I know you have planned to do in this place. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Give the Lord some praise and honor in the house today. Let's get ready to worship our King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen.
you believe he's coming soon, give the Lord some praise in the house today, will you, this morning? Amen. Thank you, team. God bless you today. You may be seated this morning in the house of the Lord. It is a joy and a privilege to be in the house of the Lord today, to worship with God's people and to get ready to hear what the Lord is going to say. You know, for 20 years now, it been, I believe, 2002 was the first time Miss Lois Hosher was actually with us here. And it's been with us almost every year since. There was a few years recently that had been missed for several things. There was some sickness and different things that she was dealing with. And, of course, our COVID situation kind of put us on hold for a little while. But uh, Miss Lois is back with us last year, and uh, she's back with us again this morning. And, you know, I have come to really love, honor, and respect uh, Miss Lois and the word that God's given her. We were privileged, and some of you were with Miss Kathy a few years ago. Uh, when we traveled to Ohio and was there for a ladies' conference and uh, uh, in that uh, setting. And then, of course, on Sunday, experienced something that neither till that time or since have I experienced again in a church there in Ohio. But that was another story. But it's just an awesome privilege to have here today. And I would uh, uh, also need to mention her daughter, Ginger, is with her today. And we welcome Ginger back to Alabama about the second, maybe or third time that Ginger has come over these last 20 years. And we're delighted to have her back with us today in this service as well. So, are you ready for the word of the Lord? Amen. I said, are you really ready for the word of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Let's stand together this morning. Let's honor the, uh, the, the lady of God and the prophet of God as she comes this morning. And let's ask the Lord to bless and rest his hand upon this word. Father, we thank you today for your blessings. We thank you today for the privilege of being in the house of the Lord. And we just welcome you today, Holy Spirit. And we know now, God, you got a word for us. So, God, set the atmosphere, set our hearts in place to hear and receive what you are going to release today in this place in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. 
Would you welcome Miss Lois Hoster this morning? She comes to minister to us. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You may be seated. <laughs> okay. Um, Ginger is uh, going to. Well, hi there. <laughs> uh, Ginger's going to uh, share a few things with you uh, before I bring the message. And um, it's so good to be here. My goodness, it uh, seems like it's been forever, but um, uh, we're happy to be here and uh, going to be in several places this week. But um, I want Ginger to uh, just share what's on her heart. Good morning. Oh, good morning. <laughs> All righty. Well, as she said, I'm Ginger, her lovely only daughter and favorite at that. And the reason I'm up here is to let you know that this beautiful mama of mine and moi, <laughs> we do a podcast. And it is something, it's a video podcast, so you get to see her every single week if you so choose. We are going to let you know about this by, there's cards on the book table out there, but also wanted to let you know that she has written, um, how many books? Seven. Seven, count them, seven books. Book seven just came out. It's called Walking in the Realm of Glory. You do not want to miss the opportunity to take advantage of getting that book. It is, as I said on the table, there is also a book called Watershed Moments, Lord, Your Word Says. That is a, um, a book that the Lord gave to me back in 2013, and we go through the Watershed Moments with God, Lord Your Word Says book in the podcast, as well as several of her books. But it's called Prophecy and Promises for Everyday Life. I take care of the pro promises piece. We have, we just sit at a dining room table and have a little round table discussion about different promises that God's Word uh, gives to us as his kids. And Mama, she brings out some prof prophecies, and we tear them down and break them apart. But we also have fun doing it, don't we? Do we have fun? Yes. You happy I'm yours? Oh, yeah. See? <laughs> okay. Do we have a clip? Yes? No? Ah, looky there. Here we go. and promises for everyday life. My name is Ginger and this is my mama Lois. Hi there. Hi. Glad to be here again. I'm happy to be here too. <laughs> Today's going to be fun. Yes it is. Guess what? What? I have a secret. Oh what is that? I have a key too. Does it unlock the secret? Yes. <laughs> okay good. <laughs> Do you want to hear about it? Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. but they want to hear about it. Do you want to hear about it? I have a secret and we have the key. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about that today. All righty. Well, well, you can nix that because you guys will have to just go online and see the rest of that. We just have a lot of fun. We want to give you strength, encouragement, and just what we need in today's times. You agree? I mean, does anybody need encouraged besides me? Oh, golly. You need direction from the Holy Spirit, right? Well, it is our endeavor and our privilege to be able to do this, to present it to you all. So if you're able, catch us on YouTube, Prophecy and Promises for Everyday Life, Mama. Yep. Here you go. <laughs> all right. Thank you. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, it uh, has been a trip, believe me. 
um, working with Ginger every day is an experience. Thank you. Oh, goodness. Well, I have a message for you this morning that uh, is definitely a word in season. You know, we look at this world. Can you believe the world that we're living in? Come on. I mean, can you believe that you are seeing things that you are seeing take place in our culture and in America today. I mean, as old as I am, I can't believe that I am seeing these things. And we need to realize that it is simply the word of God being fulfilled. There is nothing that is taking place in this world that caught God off guard, that threw him off his throne. There is not one thing that has taken place that he's not aware of and he has made provision for. And so we are going to look at some of the, the things that are going on. But the thing of it is I want you to realize that God said, Jesus said, that we would do these and greater than these than we saw him do. We, how many of you have, have studied the word and have seen the things that God has done in his word and the things that uh, are going on today compared to the things that are happening? Well, Jesus said in John 14, 12 through 14, these words, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you shall ask anything in my name, anything in my name, Anything in my name, I will do it. Well, I know we have asked a lot of things in his name and seemingly didn't see the answers that we wanted. But there's more to it than this. Jesus also said in John 7, 38, these words, He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. How many so-called Christians that you see today don't have anything but a little trickle coming out? They don't have rivers flowing out of their belly. And that's what the Word of God says we are to have. Rivers, rivers flowing out of us. Now, in the very next verse, it says that he spoke of the Spirit because the Holy Ghost had not yet been given because Jesus wasn't glorified. Now, I'm here to tell you this morning that if you aren't baptized in the Holy Ghost, if you don't have that fullness of the Spirit of God, you're not going to make it through what's coming on this earth. You are not going to be able to endure the things that are coming on this earth without the Spirit of God being in you. You have got to be filled with His Spirit. Filled. With his spirit. So, in order to be a candidate for the John 14 12, we see that we must receive the scripture in John 7 38 and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as the scripture has said. That seems like such a simple word. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as the scripture has said. Well, what does the scripture say about the Lord and who he is? 
do we believe that Jesus is our healer? Do we really believe it? Do we really believe it? Do we believe that Jesus is our deliverer? That he is delivering today from drugs and alcohol and sexual perversion. He is a deliverer if we will only allow him in our life. He is our deliverer. Do we believe that Jesus is our shield and our protection in the storms of life? We're all going through something. Everyone is going through something. And if you're not going through something now, wait till tomorrow. <laughs> it's life. It's life. And so you need to realize that Jesus is your shield. He is your protector. He is that that you need him to be in your life every day. Like, like Ginger said, promises for everyday life. This book is full of promises for everyday life. But you've got to know what is yours. You've got to know what it says. You've got to know the promises of God and then be alive in your spirit. They can't just be words. They have to be living. You know, the word of God is living. In the beginning was the Word, the Word became flesh and dwelt among men. Jesus Christ is the living Word of God. And if we ever get a hold of that, if we ever realize that this Word is life, it is life, it's alive, and it will do what it says it will do. Do we believe in Jesus that the Scripture has said he is? Well, Acts 1, 8, we all know this, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the world. Peter then stood up on Pentecost, after Pentecost had fully come, after it had come into the completion of what God intended for it to be. He stood up and he declared boldly, this is that that was spoken of by the prophet Joel. This is what I am talking about. This is what has been promised to you. This is that that has been promised. Well, the Lord has had a remnant of people since that time, a remnant of people that have boldly declared the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues and the power of the Jesus name to heal and deliver and to cast out demons in Jesus name. The day is upon us people that we are going to have to have the power of the Holy Ghost because you're not going to have to go looking for demons. They're going to find you. You're not going to have to go too far to see the power that has been unleashed on this world that is evident every place you turn. Every place you turn. But it has just been a remnant. The first time Jesus came, he came to his people, the Jews, and they rejected him. The next time he comes, he's coming to his church, the established church. And they are going to reject him. How many times have you heard Someone say, well, that can't be God. That can't be God. He's never done it like that before. Don't you know he says in his word he's going to do a new thing? <laughs> he's going to do a new thing. And that new thing is going to be new to us, not to him. It's going to be new to us. The prophetic word that the Lord gave me over 20 years ago is being fulfilled right before our eyes. Mario Murillo is one man that God's using mightily. You ever hear, watch him? Oh, he is being used in a mighty way 
with revival. The Lord gave me a word and told me back in the 80s that when Billy Graham died, that the anointing that was on him for evangelism was going to be poured out over the earth in such a way that there would be just evangelists rise up and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I believe that that truly has happened with uh, Mario Murillo as one of them. But I thought at the time that the Lord spoke that, that <laughs> Billy Graham was going to be dying any day. I mean, he was up in his 80s. Well, things don't always happen like we think they're going to. He lived to be almost 100 years old. And I just put that on the shelf and totally forgot about it. And the day that they announced on the news that Billy Graham had died, I mean, it was like <laughs> I saw an explosion of fireworks in the heavenly realm. I looked up, and it was just like fireworks going off all over the place. And those sparks off the fireworks, when Billy Graham walked through the gates of glory, those fireworks landed on people around the world. And that spirit of evangelism that he had on him was released on the world and it's been increasing and it's been growing ever since well mario morello is just one of them that god is using around the world it's not an american thing it's around the world Bodies are being healed, blind eyes open, cancers are being cast out of the and the lame walking again. This is the third great awakening. We aren't going to have to wait any longer. This is the third great awakening in the world today. We, we just see with our little tunnel vision the things that God's doing right in our own backyard. But I'm telling you, around the world Things are exploding around the world. People are being healed and delivered and set free. Now, the word that God gave me over 20 years ago was that the, and I had a vision, it's, it's in my one book, but uh, the Lord said that in that day, that uh, the last day, that there would be a power of God that was poured out upon the earth and that the pimps and the pushers would come in to the body of Christ, that they would come into the church. And so many of the churches will reject them because they don't look right, and they don't smell right, they don't do like they do. The Lord said that he is going to make a way where there seems to be no way, that the pimps, the pushers, the drug addicts, and all these people are coming in. That's happening in Mario Morello's uh, <laughs> revivals that he has. And we're believing it's going to happen all over the world. I mean, it's, it's just not a, a simple thing that's just located in one spot. It is happening everywhere we look. God is doing what he said he was going to do. Now, the Lord spoke to me and he said, don't miss the visitation of the Lord because we're so busy trying to discern whether it be God or not. You know, the word says that if everything was recorded that Jesus had done, that even the world possibly couldn't contain the books that would hold it. Jesus, from the very beginning, has always been creating and doing and and uh, working, and the books wouldn't be able to contain everything that he has done. Our Bible is just a little taste of the things that Jesus did, and the Lord said he was going to do a new thing. Well, just because it isn't recorded in his word, don't throw it out. Don't throw it out. Now, if it's contrary to the word, if, it, if something is happening and it talks directly against the word of God, then don't buy it. <laughs> don't get in on that. But if it isn't mentioned, 
you need to realize that God is doing that new thing that he said he would do. There are so many that are missing what God is doing because of <laughs> their own mindset. I know my Grandpa Green was an old-time Pentecostal preacher. And I'm telling you, he didn't think there was any Bible that you could use but King James. I mean, <laughs> you'd have thought that was the original. Well, it wasn't the original, but Grandpa in his, you know, his day, he didn't realize that. And, I mean, he wouldn't preach out of anything else. He wouldn't, sp he spoke King James. And I was raised on that. Well, when things started changing and people started getting other versions of the Bible, my goodness, you'd have thought that the world was coming to an end. I mean, it was just unbelievable. But God is doing things in a different way in this day. That doesn't mean we condone sin by any means. We need to realize that the things that God says are sin, they're still sin. They're still sin. It doesn't make any difference who says what. The word of God says that it's sin, it's sin. Bottom line. That's the way it's going to be. In Mario Murillo's services, I heard him say that it didn't matter what he preached, that the glory of God drew people to repentance. That's revival. He said it didn't matter what he preached. At the end of his services, when he gave an invitation, people flocked to the altar people just came in droves the drug addicts are bringing their drugs in and throwing them down the the pimps and the pushers and the prostitutes are coming in weeping repentant and he said it didn't matter that the glory of god was being manifested in a mighty mighty way well ginger and i went to um a meeting here of oh several weeks ago now, uh, that Pastor John Kilpatrick from the Brownsville Revival fame was there. And he talked about, I mean, <laughs> I had never followed him much, but uh, he talked about the Brownsville Revival and what had happened there and how the glory of God just came in and swept over the people. And he said people would be slain in the spirit. They would just by droves be out on the floor for hours. And wouldn't be able to move because of the glory of God being so heavy in that place. And people that weren't even saved, that weren't even born again, would uh, just be knocked off their feet with the power of God. And, of course, that lasted for quite some time. But that is the power of God that we are seeing today. One of the most interesting, uh, amazing things of his uh, description of the glory realm was when he spoke. And uh, I've known this, but I just never put it into the words that he put it into. And he said that the glory is not the same as the anointing. Now, I've known that, but I've never said it. He said you can be under the anointing of God and things will happen and uh, miracles will take place and uh, the gifts of the Spirit will be in operation. And But the thing of it is when you're finished, when you're uh, under, under a heavy anointing and you get done... Your physical body is drained. I mean, and I've been there, done that, and I know you have too. You get so drained that, uh, I mean, you can't do anything but preach the service and go lay down. 
And he said, but when you're under the glory, when the glory of God comes in, he says, you leave refreshed. You don't know that uh, the same gifts and the same operation is there, but you are under the anointing of God. And it is amazing how the glory of God will just come in and do things. It's just God. <laughs> it's just God. He is getting ready and is doing that thing of his glory showing up and being poured out upon the crowds of people. His glory just being poured out and it is happening today. I know that's one of the reasons that I wrote Walking in the Glory Realm because I believe that there is a realm of glory that you can walk in that <laughs> God's getting a people ready to do that. He is getting a people prepared. And in the midst of everyday life, in the midst of what you have to do, in the midst of everything that's going on, you will be able to walk in the glory of God and it will be seen upon you. It will be seen upon you. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Oh, praise you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Father. The Lord said don't miss the visitation of the Lord because we're so busy trying to discern whether it be of him. John the Baptist, when he was in prison, he was about to die. He sent his disciples to Jesus with this question. Are you the one or should we look for another? Now, John the Baptist baptized Jesus. He saw the dove come down and land on him. He had walked with him. He had been around him probably most of his life. And yet he asked that question. And I thought, how could John the Baptist ask a question like that? I mean, come on. He had seen the miracles. He had seen the power and all that. And yet he asked that question. That just goes to show how human we are. That just goes to show. I mean, how many of us have seen miracles take place and six months later we're crying to God because we need something? Come on. Well, he sent his disciples to talk to him. And ask him if he was the one. And Jesus said this. Go and tell John what you have seen. The blind see. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the gospel to the poor is being preached. I can imagine John just pondering those things in his heart and saying, I've seen this. Lord, I know, I know that you're the one. I know. Deep inside, I know that you're the one because I've seen the power of God being poured out and I've seen those things happen. What is it going to take for us to realize God is in our midst? God is in our midst. And the power of and the authority and the glory of God reigns over his people. There is just a time coming. And even now, it's being poured out the glory of God. 
there's going to be a people. I'm telling you, there's going to be a people that will walk in the glory realm of God. And they won't, <laughs> they won't have to wonder if it's God. Because when it, it's his glory that is manifested, it'll just happen. There won't be any demons in hell that's going to stop it. See, the power of God is coming to America. The power of God is coming to America. America is not lost. America is going to be saved. America will not fall under the hands of Satan and his cohorts. It is not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And I believe the church is now raising up. That remnant of believers are now raising up. Now, there's going to be the religious <laughs> that are going to say that can't be God. He's never done that before. He doesn't work like that. There is going to be a remnant that will come out of that group and they're not going to be ashamed of the gospel. They're not going to worry about whose feelings they hurt. You know, we, we worry about offending people. And they're going to hell. What kind of sense does that make? We need to offend the hell right out of people and get them tuned into Jesus Christ and let them know he is the only way. It doesn't matter what Muhammad says. It doesn't matter what Buddha says. It doesn't matter what any of these other religions say. He is the only way. And we're going to have to stand up strong and declare that Jesus Christ is the answer. That's what's going to save America. That is what's going to save America. And, you know, little old ladies and little old men sitting at home and think they can't do nothing, you can pray. You can pray. And your prayers are being bottled up in heaven, and they're going to be poured out upon all the earth before long, and it's going to be a massive, massive move of the revival of Jesus Christ. They are going to be seen upon the earth. We have become seeker friendly, are busy building mega churches, and are looking for the numbers. While they're busy doing their own thing, the Lord is raising up a people. <laughs> you know, I love the way God works. We listened to Jonathan Kahn on the way down here in the car. Uh, I can't begin to try to tell you what that man said. He talks about the different things that God is revealing to him. And do you all know who Jonathan Kahn is? Oh, he's a Jewish, born-again Jewish believer <laughs> that God has raised up that <laughs> is just absolutely amazing with the things that God has shown him. And he started going through all these things it blows your mind because he gives dates of things that have happened that coincide with the things that God said was going to happen on the very day that it took place. The very day that this was supposed to happen or that was supposed to happen. And he didn't have any idea. He didn't know until God started revealing it to him, and he began looking up the history. I'll tell you, you need to get online and listen to Jonathan Kahn because he is absolutely has insight of what is coming on this earth. 
and what is going to happen. Uh, he wrote the Harbinger and the Harbinger Two and uh, different things. And I mean, it is absolutely amazing what he has said that God has revealed to him that he can prove with documented proof of uh, things that are happening and are going to happen. God is raising up people that he's giving this stuff to and we need to realize that he wants us in on it. He wants us in on everything he's doing. That's one of the reasons Ginger and I started doing this uh, little podcast. I mean, the Lord spoke to her and told her that we need to do it. And he had spoken to me several years ago about doing something like that. But, you know, I'm from the old school and phew, podcast. you got to be kidding me. Well, she knows how to do it. <laughs> It's a good thing because I couldn't begin to do it. I mean, I do good to get my phone to work half the time. <laughs> it isn't that funny. <laughs> and I'm always <laughs> calling her up. My This disappeared or that disappeared from my phone. And so, oh, well. So, anyways, we decided to do this because... God's people need to hear that he is speaking prophetically every day of your life. Now, you don't need to think that's so far out and so ridiculous. God is speaking prophetically every day if we have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. How many times does he say that in the book of Revelation? He that has an ear, let him hear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. That is the, the Spirit of God that's moving across the land right now, and he wants you to hear what he is saying to the church, to you, to me, what he is saying that will change your life. Now, we're going to have to realize that we're not all the same. God works different ways in different people. I know that. But he is going to get his truth revealed before it's over without any help he is going to pour out his glory the glory of the latter house is going to be greater than that of the former the glory of the latter house do you realize that it says that the priest couldn't even stand to minister because the glory of God was so thick and so heavy in the, the temple when they went to dedicate it that they couldn't even begin to minister to the people that is happening that is going to happen in all of our little churches in all around the world that is going to happen it's happening in massive scales in the revivals that are going on thousands and thousands of people are coming to the lord every day uh, in our little <laughs> circles we might not hear about that but i'm telling you it is happening get online get start paying attention to the prophets start paying attention to uh people like uh mario Morello and uh what's some of the others that <laughs> hank kuhneman and oh my 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 we watch flashpoint on tv all the time and I mean, they are right on with the things of God that are happening around the world. Are you going to be in on this? That's the question. Are you going to be in on it or are you going to be sitting back with a religious spirit all over you saying, it? well, I don't know if this is God or not. I don't know if this is God. Huh. 
Well, if it gives the glory to God, then what's the question? If all the glory is going to Him, what is the problem? Well, you know, so many times people don't want to talk about being filled with the Spirit and the evidence of speaking in tongues because that's not popular. Well, I never did win any popularity contest, so it don't matter to me. <laughs> oh. Just a few years ago, very few people knew who Kent Christmas was or a truck driver by the name of Timothy Dixon. And yet God has given them a platform today that they are ministering the word of God with such an anointing and such a glory of God that has been poured out that, well, Timothy Dixon, does anybody know who he is? I mean, I mean, he was just a truck driver that played his guitar and sang songs and did a iPod <laughs> broadcast and, you know, and boy, people started getting hold of the dreams he was having and the prophetic words that he was saying and the things that was coming to pass that he had proclaimed. And next thing you know, he's got a ministry that is growing by leaps and bounds. And, you know, the thing of it is, it's because he is so humble and because they are so laid back. I know we went to Kent uh, Christmas's church, and he is one of the most humble, contrite people that you would ever want to meet. I mean, the Spirit of God will move on him and he will be weeping, unashamedly weeping, and they are absolutely telling people you've got to be born again and you have to be baptized in the Holy Ghost with fire in order to get through what is coming to this earth and hundreds and hundreds are getting saved through their ministries and this is just a few that we know about the lord gave me a prophetic word several years ago at the about the end time revival. And he said, my people have been crying out for the fire of God to fall on the earth and consume the sacrifice. But I have been lighting small revival fires around the earth with people here and people there. The day is coming when they shall open their eyes and see the small fires that have connected and the whole earth is consumed by my glory, says the Lord. The whole earth is going to be consumed with the glory of God. Now, we don't have to die and go to heaven to get in on this glory. We don't, we've been waiting. And I know back in my grandpa's day, old time Pentecostals, you had to die and go to heaven to walk on streets of gold and get a taste of the glory of God. That is not like that today. You can have the glory of God revealed to you. You can have it poured out in your house if you are willing to hear the voice of God, if you're willing to pay the price, if you are willing to do what he tells you to do. How many people are not willing to push back from the table, are not willing to fast one day a week, are not willing to pray for an hour every day, are not willing to do those things that God is telling them to do. What are you going to do 
with this Jesus that has been given to you? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? When I was in Florida in November, the Lord gave me a prophetic word. And I'm telling you, it is amazing because I see things happening that he has spoken of time and time again taking place. And this is a word that he gave me. He says, they shall be known as the shining ones. Hmm. Even now I am doing a work among my people that is not yet being displayed upon the earth. They are being equipped for the greatest outpouring of my glory that has ever been seen. But with that glory will come great darkness upon the earth. Did I not speak through my prophets of old and tell of these times that were coming? But with that warning of the dark times to come, I gave instructions to and for my people to know what they were to do. Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. That's Isaiah 61 and 2. You shall be known as the shining ones, and you will speak my word, and it shall be done. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and I will cause your sons and your daughters to come from the pig pen of their life and call upon me. They will see my glory and know that they have been deceived. As my shining ones go forth in obedience unto me, I will cause a great outpouring of my spirit to take place through them. They will not be lifted up in pride and arrogance as in times past, but they will remain my humble servants, for they will know where the power comes from and will just do what I tell them to do. I am fine-tuning the ears of those that have clean hands and a pure heart. They will hear my voice with precision and distinct instructions. They will not see in themselves the shining, but will recognize it in their fellow workers in the kingdom and will know who is on the side of the Lord. We are going to have to have the gift of discerning of spirits to know who is on our side. Everyone that claims to be a Christian is not what they say they are. You need to realize that everyone is... A, <laughs> Claiming that name is not going to be <laughs> invited into the kingdom of heaven. God is going to, before long, separate the sheep and the goats. I say, spend time with me and seek my face. For the time is upon us to see and experience that great last day outpouring of my spirit and the coming of of the king. Oh. Mm -mm -mm. Where are you going to be? Now in the last two years, a little over two years, we've lost loved ones. We've had a plague that's been released upon the world. Lies that have been told by government officials and people in places of authority that you used to be able to trust. Things are happening that are totally satanic in what is going on. We thought that the gays we're going to pose a problem. 
Well, that's the least of the problems because they're teaching our kids in school that they can choose if they want to be a boy or a girl. I, come on. That is just sick. There is nothing, nothing that has entered the minds of man that is not being perpetrated right now upon this earth. Nothing. Now, we need to pray for those that are caught up in this. We need to see that they are ministered to and set free. But I'm telling you, there is only one way, only one way that they are ever going to be set free and delivered, and that's through the power of Jesus Christ, the blood of the Lamb, and the cross, and what was done. Oh, there is no other way. Now, in this day and age, we... tend to shy away from that. But I'm telling you, a holy boldness is coming upon the people of God. A holy boldness is coming upon his children, and they're not going to be ashamed. They're not going to back down. They're not going to water down the gospel. They're not going to not say what the word of God says because it's not a popular thing. They are going to speak the truth. And we're not talking about the preachers. We're talking about a move of God over his people. We're talking about the power of God being poured out upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters are going to prophesy. Your old men will see uh, visions and dreams. And your young men will whatever see visions. <laughs> I always get that mixed up. And they are going to say what is happening right now. And we are going to be anointed. We are going to be anointed. We are being anointed to do this. Where do you stand? And all of this. Where do you stand in all of this that is going on right now? You know, almost every family has someone in their family that is being pulled away or talked in to this kind of lifestyle. I saw a thing on the internet the other day and said if your pastor tells you it's okay to drink find another church what are we going to do with these truths You've got to be honest with yourself. You've got to be honest with yourself. What are you going to do with these truths? I found a prophetic word in my notebook that I brought with me. 
I have no idea when the Lord gave it to me or how long it had been there. And I wasn't going to share that this morning. But the Lord is leading in different directions. I know those of you that get prophetic words from the Lord, you write them down and <laughs> you don't, I don't, I'm terrible for not putting dates on things. I mean, terrible. So I don't have any idea when this word came forth. But it evidently was given to me when I was in Alabama on one of my trips. And I want you to hear what the Lord is saying through this word. I mean, I read it to Ginger last night, and I was amazed because I just could not get over the Lord being so specific. The Lord said, I am gathering together my eagles for my end time purposes to be fulfilled. I have called my ministers from every walk of life that they can take back the seven mountains of influence that the enemy has stolen. Their vocation is that voice within that will be my voice giving direction and the guidance of my spirit. And the word for vocation, it's voca, B-O-C-A, and that's what that means, a voice within that causes you to turn and listen to the guidance of the Spirit of God. My Alabama Eagles do not yet have the revelation of my plan. They have been chosen by me to lead the way. Because they stood with my church chosen people in times gone by, I have a plan of reimbursement that will be multiplied many times over with a be because they have been uh, because of what they have been to the sons of God. Can't read my own writing. They will lead the way back to take back the mountains of influence of the world. What the enemy has sought belongs to him. I have only allowed him to use for the purpose of a greater blessing to my sons of the south. The power of my prophetic word is being brought to fruition even now as I am pouring out of my spirit on the youth of Alabama as I said I would do. The spirit of revival is being released in the prisoners around this nation and the captives are being set free. Some of my eagles have suffered wounds that were not properly taken care of. And because of this, some have given in to despair and have lost sight of hope. But my general eagles have been given the insight to pour in the oil and the wine, and restoration is taking place. I have said in my word to look unto the hills from which comes your help. Your help comes from the Lord. As you look unto me, I will instruct you and give you the wisdom needed to take the mountains for my glory. The mountains of families, the mountain of government, the mountain of business, the mountain of media, the mountain of education, the mountain of entertainment, and the mountain of religion. This time has been established in the heavens to release my earthbound eagles that they may begin to soar on the wind of my spirit. Isaiah 2.2 2 says, And it shall come to pass 
in the last day that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as wings of an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We have a lot of people today that were meant to be eagles of the Spirit of God that have fainted because of circumstances. He didn't answer your prayer for your loved one to be healed. He took them home. Do you realize that every single one of us here have a book in heaven? And our name has been written in that book. And every day, every day of destiny has been recorded. And it's up to you what you're going to do with it. God gives us the choice to do what we do. This morning, I want you to just be honest with yourself. Just be honest with yourself. What are you going to do? With this last day outpouring of God's glory. It's being poured out. <laughs> it is being poured out. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Let's pray. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, that name of that is above every name, that you would touch, that you would heal, that you would deliver, that you would pour out of your anointing upon every, every person that's in the sound of my voice. And Lord, that they would know beyond any doubt that you have called them that you have chosen them for this last day move of your spirit. And Father, that they have a, a work to do. They have a job to do that they can't just sit by and let the world go on. They must let their voice be heard. They must speak up with the power and the anointing of the Spirit of the living God. Lord, every one in this place can walk in that glory realm that you have for them. They must be willing to pay the price. They must be willing to do what you have called them to do and show them the way to go. Now I want to ask every one of you, how many want to be in on this last day outpouring of God's Spirit? How many of you want to let your voice be heard, even if it's to your neighbors or your children or your family, let every voice be lifted up to the glory of God.
Let every voice be lifted up. How many of you would raise your hand and say, that's me. I want to be heard. I want my voice to be heard. I want to say and do what God has called me to do. I want to be in on what he is doing in this last day. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Would you stand to your feet? Lord, I'm asking right now for you to pour out of your spirit on every single one that's in this place. Father, that you would show them, show them which way to go and what they are to do. Lord, there are some in this place that they have never, ever stepped out in faith and obeyed the nudging of your spirit and Lord I'm asking right now for you to do just that for you to move on them right now those of you that want this outpouring of the glory of God Would you get out of your seat and come up here and just stand? Just tell the Lord, that's me. I want all you have for me. That's me. I want you to just use me. I want you to show me what you would have me to do. Show me, show me, Lord, show me, Father. Oh, Kalia, under the Boshi, under the Sire, Yeli, under the Kaseli, under the Yesikili, under the Bosire, Yeli, Asili, under the Kaili, under the Sakili, under the Bosire. Holy, 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 holy Lord. Holy Lord. The Lord sees every one of you that are standing up here. And he knows you are willing to make a commitment. Make a commitment that you will be all he's called you to be. That you will do what he has called you to do. That you will ask him for direction and guidance in your everyday life. You're making a commitment right now. You're making a covenant with a covenant-making God that you will do what He has told you to do. Now with some of you, it may be something different. God's changing assignments and you need to realize you need to realize that he has a place for you in this last day and age I want you to lift your hand to heaven Lord, you see these eagles that you are raising up, and you know the power and the anointing and the glory of God that you have reserved for each one. 
And Father, I'm asking right now, you see their hearts. You know the power and the glory of God that is right there for them. Show them, Father. Show them, Father, what you would have them to do. In Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, praise you, Father, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, pour out of your spirit upon this, your daughter, and let her know beyond any doubt that she is right where she needs to be. And you are declaring your love and your goodness and your, your grace over her life in the name of Jesus. Show her, show her. you have been misunderstood time and time again and it has brought discouragement to you a power and a spirit of discouragement to you because it seems like no one ever listens to what I have to say but the Lord says my daughter know that as I put words in your mouth you will speak it forth and the ones that I have ordained will hear will hear say it
Jesus' name, I break off the power of the spirit of discouragement off of this, your son. Lord, that he would walk in that fullness of glory that you have ordained that he walk in. And Father, that he would stop looking at people, that he would stop hearing what people say, that he would stop doing the things that he has been doing because of hearsay. Lord, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus to let the joy of the Lord be his strength. Let the joy of the Lord be his strength. And he would walk in the power and the anointing of God that you have declared over him. You have written in his book that he would walk in that glory. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Oh, Jesus, you are so good to us. Look for and long for this day for so long. And, Father, the battles that have raged against her and the situations that have come against her are going to just be as a vapor in life that she is victorious and overcoming and father in the name of Jesus let her walk in that that you have called her to let her fulfill the power and the anointing of God that you have placed in her. And Lord, let her see the results of what you have called her to do. More, more, more of your spirit, Lord, working in her life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you. Praise you. Jesus. Such a prayer warrior. Such a prayer warrior. Father, in the name of Jesus, increase, increase, increase the power and the glory of God in this your daughter. Let her begin to walk in a greater anointing for praying the prayer that is on your heart, Lord on your heart. Let her know what is on your heart, Father, and speak forth that word.
Jesus says you're so ready to receive. You are so ready to receive that you have just opened yourself up to the spirit of the living God in every way that you know how. And the Lord says you're about to see some things. You're about to be shown things that you have only dreamed of and heard of. Let your power be seen in this, your daughter. Let her know beyond any doubt that she is hearing from you, that she has known your heart and your voice in times past, and it is only going to increase in the days ahead. The Lord says truly, the best is yet to come. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Praise you, Lord. The Lord says that you are a worshiper. He has seen your heart. He knows the things that you have asked of him and not one not one will be lost that you have prayed for. Not one will be lost that you have spoken their name before me. Not one will be lost in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord.
Lord says that he has a people that you are going to reach that no one else wants to bother you. No one else wants to spend their time messing around with you because they seem to be without hope. But the Lord says that he is going to put an anointing on you that you will speak forth the words of truth into their lives and their lives will be changed because you have done what he said you would do. Now, I speak deliverance to you in Jesus' name. I speak total, complete deliverance in the name of Jesus. And Father, I break every chain that has her bound. I break every chain that holds her. Lord, you've got a call and a work for her to do. And Father, she must be free in order to do this. And Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, set her free in Jesus' name. body. I speak the power and the glory of God to fall upon this woman. And in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, bring with you yet. You've got a work to do. You've got a work to do and he wants to make you whole in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be healed. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, says you have a lot of questions. <laughs> that you have wondered this and wondered that. The Lord says to tell you that you have an honest heart before him and he is going to answer your questions that you have inundated him with for a long time. And he is going to give you the answers they won't always be the answers that you're looking for, but they will be his answers. Get ready to hear the voice of the Lord speak to you because he has some answers for your questions of 
Father, in Jesus' name, I'm asking you to touch her, bring forth the light of her salvation in Jesus' name, and let her know beyond any doubt that you are who you say you are, and you will do what you have said you will do. circumstances, you have held on to him. The Lord says, you're about to receive a reward for your endeavors. You are about to receive a reward for all you have gone through and all you have done. He is going to give you the answers for your prayers that you need and he is going to touch your life in Jesus' name. Father, right now. Bless God for the word of the Lord and bless God for the presence of God. Do you sense the presence of the Lord's presence here right now? Amen. Amen. God has done wonderful things. Hallelujah. In this service today. Amen. Did you love Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want to ask uh, Brother Benny and a couple of our ushers to get ready. You know that we have boxes at each door for you to place your tithe and offering in for your church. And as I say every week, don't miss your blessing because there's a blessing in tithing and giving. It's a direct blessing tied to that. But we also want to bless the one that has labored and delivered a word to us. You know, every now and then we'll have somebody that will come and lay a dollar or two on the, on the uh, altar or whatever when a word is given. I don't know that we fully embrace and understand exactly what that's all about. But you know, when we've received something, in order to complete that, we need to sow into that. Uh, we need to sow something into that Word and make that Word come alive in us. So I want to ask you to sow today uh, into this Word that has come forth in this house today. And in a moment, I'm going to bless this, and then I'm going to let them work on that. And I'm going to talk to you just for a couple of moments while they're receiving that offering. Father, we just want to thank you today for the word that's come forth in this house. We thank you for the ministry of your spirit that's come forth in this house, God. And we thank you, Lord, that you have confirmed today, O oh God, what you are speaking to this house. And we recognize that and we acknowledge that today, Lord. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Search down. You might not have but a dollar, but sow something into this word today, okay? If you got a hundred dollars, sow a hundred. If you got a thousand, sow a thousand. Whatever, however God has blessed you, but sow something into this word today, if you possibly can, it's been given. How many of you were in church here last Sunday morning? How many of y'all were here? Some of y'all were, some of you don't want to admit it, but that's okay. 
Now, I haven't talked to Miss Lois at all about today's message. I talked to her briefly yesterday just to make sure they were in town. And then in my office this morning, we talked and just had prayer and that kind of thing. So she has no idea what I preached last Sunday morning. But how many of you preached, remember last Sunday morning? How many of you remember the title of the message last Sunday? Anybody remember the title of the message last Sunday? Okay. Your assignment for this afternoon is to go back and watch the live stream from last week. Amen? <laughs> That's your assignment. But the message last Sunday morning was simply titled, Preparing for the Shift. Preparing for the Shift. And you remember that we talked about how that God is going to do and is doing a new thing and that it is not going to look like what we've always thought it looked like, but as long as it's in line with the gospel, as long as it's lining up with the word, not our religious beliefs, not our traditions, but the gospel. Did anybody hear that? I got a little kickback on that, so let me say that again. Not our religion, not our traditions, but the word of God. Remember how I told you the story about the man from the 60s who had all the hippies that were saved and came, they came into the church and they didn't look like everybody else. And that, but they had got saved in the, in the, in the, in the uh, youth explosion of the 60s. Somebody told the pastor, said, we can't have this. They're dirty. They're going to mess up our carpet that we just put down. And the pastor said, I'll handle it. The next week they come back and the pastor's had all the carpet taken up. Amen. We've got to get ready for what God's going to do. And it's not going to look like what we've always thought. But if it's in line with the Word of God, that's all that counts. There is a shift coming. Don't forget my three-speed transmission I talked about last week. Amen? And God is shifting. This Word today has confirmed what God is saying to this house. And I want to tell you something. Any time that Jesus wanted to make something known, He would say, Verily, verily. Are you with me? So God has verily, verily this message of a coming shift this morning through the message delivered through Miss Lois. And this house is a part of it. So let's make sure we're in line with what God has for us. Amen? Now, Miss, pa Miss Lois is speaking a while ago as evangelist. I'm now speaking as a pastor. Amen? Make sure we're aligned, people, with what God is going to do because there's a shift coming. There's a move of God coming. And again, to confirm what I've said and what you've heard said, it's not going to be about one individual. God's doing this across the body of Christ. Amen? So, no, is he going to use me? Yes, he is. So, I praise God for the word. As I was sitting there, I was just thinking, God, you are speaking to us today. And he has done that very thing. Uh, as you came in this morning, you received a little piece of paper in your hand. And I won't, I'm not going to take a lot of time with that. But this is just to give you an outline of some of the discipleship opportunities that are coming that we're going to talk about in detail next Sunday morning. So I wanted to put something in your hands. All of it's not fully complete yet. We've got a few little spots to fill in. But this gives you an idea of looking and seeing some of the discipleship opportunities. I am expecting my house to plug into. Can I say amen? These are not for everybody else. Well, I, this is for everybody else. I'm just going to come on Sunday morning. I may come to your house. Amen? We've got to get ready for what God's going to do. And we've got to get ready for the seats that God's going to fill in this house. Amen? So look at this, and then next Sunday morning, the whole message and whole service is going to be about uh, what God is doing. I have a message already that God's given me about discipleship, fellowship, and outreach. We're going to talk about that, and then we're going to be introducing all of these different ministries and opportunities for you to get connected, plugged in, discipled, grow, build relationships, fellowship, and get ready for what God is going to do in this house. Can I get an amen this morning? Amen. Well, thank you, Miss Lois. Let me also say that tonight, 7 o'clock, I will be preaching in a tent revival meeting on Green Valley Road where the old Brannon Springs Church used to be, uh, down on Green Valley Road. And uh, if you go down Green Valley Road about a half a mile before you get to Highway 77, you'll see this tent right there on the left. If you go down 77, turn left on Green Valley, go about a half a mile, it'll be on the right where the old Brannon Springs Church used to be a hundred year old church it was blown away in the storm a couple of years a few years ago but there's a tent revival there and miss lois will be preaching on thursday night there at that tent meeting there was an opening come up and a lady called me and said is miss lois available i said i'll see so she's going to be preaching on thursday night and then there'll be others filling in as, as well so there tonight at seven o'clock they have prayer at six thirty. i hope you'll come out how many of y'all ever been in a tent meeting anybody ever been in a tent revival hey, amen well i bet it's been a minute though hadn't it so this is your opportunity to sit out under the, not under the stars, but in the tent with the sides open and come 
and be a part of this. So, do you love Jesus today? Ain't God good? Have you appreciated the word that's come forth in the house today? Have you received something from this word today? Amen. Give the Lord praise. Let's stand together. Amen. Let's be dismissed with a prayer. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance on you and give you peace. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Make sure to Miss, Miss Norris know that you appreciate her and go by her table out front and get some of the materials that they talked about. God bless you.